everybody. Hello, hello. Oh my gosh, I don't have room to sit down. There's no room to sit down. Oh, hi. <laughs> I got a new little stool. I'm so excited. Um, hey guys, I'm Tracy. Um, I am with Tracy's Fancy. I'm a brand ambassador for Dixie Bell Paint and I'm coming to you live from my workshop tonight. My husband Matt is behind the scenes hello, filming. Hello. Um, any of my regulars, you guys, please say hello. Say hi to Matt. If you are new to the Dixie Bell Paint page, please let us know that you're new. Let us know where you're tuning in from and um, if you have any questions about the products at all. Actually, Matt, will you grab me one more paintbrush um, like for a dusting brush? that I'm gonna need here in a little bit. Uh, just a bigger one, yeah, that's good, thank you. Um, anyway, so we meet here every single Wednesday night. Oh, I thought you were gonna throw that at me. Did you see me flinch? Uh, I'd be like, Sorry, we meet here every first. single Wednesday night um, to, we call it Whimsical Wednesday. Um, what we're doing tonight is not very whimsical, uh, but we are going to approach a topic that is very boring, but it happens a lot. So I feel like we're, I guess we can call it a basics. It's a basics tonight. Um, it is about changing out your hardware on your dresser. So this is the dresser that we did together last Wednesday right here. I have not touched it. I saved it for you. It's very hard to do, but I saved it for you. So, um, I haven't hello, touched it. Huh? Oh, I'm saying hello to Yvonne. Oh, he said, hi Yvonne. Uh, did I already say that we have Facebook going and we have Instagram going? So hello to everybody. Tonight's live probably, usually we go about 45 minutes, 45 minutes, almost an hour. Tonight's live will probably be right at about 30 minutes. Um, I'm gonna keep it short and to the point. So um, a lot of times you'll have a dresser or a piece of furniture that's in your home that you wanna use and or you wanna update it. And you take the time to think about your paint and do you wanna use transfers or stencils or what color is it gonna be? What room is it gonna be in? Or maybe you are want to try your hand at flipping a piece of furniture. Maybe you want to just put some color on a piece that you don't use anymore and you had out in your garage and maybe you wanna put it on Marketplace and see if you can get a couple hundred bucks for it and see if the bug bites you a little bit and if it's something you wanna do. <coughs> well, sometimes the hardware is either broken or you just don't like it or you have a visual idea what you wanna do with a piece of furniture, yet the hardware just doesn't work with that piece. Um, so you can change it out. You aren't stuck to that hardware itself, right? It should be that simple, right? Well, it isn't always that simple because um, the holes don't always match up. In fact, more often than not, your holes aren't gonna match, as odd as that sounds. So um, I'm gonna show you how not to do it because I, I've, I've been painting furniture for over 12 years now um, as a business almost that long and for a long time uh, Matt did the holes for me like after work he would come out here and say what do you need done I say I need all those holes fixed or I need you to drill new holes on the drawers so he would do it and then I would come along behind him and I'd say that you're not that you're using too much stuff you're using too much stuff and uh he would say, no, babe, you've got to cover the area really well. You've got to, you've got to cover, the, you've got to fill, not only fill the tiny little hole, but you kind of, kind of cover the area. Otherwise, it's just going to show through when you sand it back and then you, you put, uh, you put your paint on it. You're still going to be able to see the holes. I have fought with him over that for years. I have finally bowed down to Matt and, and I'm saying, you are right, honey, you are right. Because I have been doing most of my own, uh, hardware replacements now for several years. Um, I've grown up and doing my own, and uh, I need him to help me in other areas, not this. It's very simple. It's really, really simple. So tonight, I'm gonna show you how to do it with Dixie Mud. If you follow my link, I put my link um, on Facebook, uh, Instagram, it'll be there later, but if you follow my link and you go to the Dixie Bell website, when you get over there, you are gonna wonder where Dixie Mud is, and I'm gonna tell you all the different ways you can use Dixie Mud, and I'm also gonna have Matt show you up close to the camera how you don't want to fill your holes here babe we hold this up for them so that they can really see that that those those holes were filled I filled the holes I filled them are they invisible they are not they're not invisible they're still there you can see where they were they're filled to capacity all the way to the top 
but I did it the way Tracy likes to do it because I'm neat and tidy and not the way Matt does it. And um, so that's what I don't want to happen to you. And so um, I'm gonna show you how to do it. Anyway, Dixie Mud, if you go to the website to buy Dixie Mud, you need to either do the search bar and put in Dixie Mud, not just mud, put in Dixie Mud, or if you're looking for it in the drop down menu, it's under paint. You would think it'd be under tools, but it's not under tools, it's under paint. So it's listed in the paint section. I'm telling you this because I just went to look for it because I wanted to see how much it was. And uh, <laughs> I couldn't find it. Like, where is the Dixie Mud? So it's under the paint drop down menu. Uh, it comes in an eight ounce jar and it comes in white, brown, or black, which is pretty amazing because most wood filler that you get of any sort um, is gonna come in just like an off-white white color, which this is, you'll see, it's a, uh, well, it's pretty white. Um, but it's nice to have it come in the darker colors too in case you're staining, let's say you're trying to, it's not just for filling holes, it's for, you can use this for repairs, you can uh, fill in chipped areas, gouged areas, maybe you've got some small veneer areas, maybe um, the surface of your piece has some scratches in it and you wanna just smooth that out, you don't wanna sand all that out, but you wanna kind of fill it in, it's a really, really good filler. Um, but if you're gonna stain the top, if you put this on white, then you're gonna have an issue with it, whereas if you put one of the darker colors, um, it works better. Also, you can doctor small, small areas that are on dark stained areas, and you might not even have to do anything over on top of it if it's just like cracks or crevices and sort of hidden spots. So um, it's nice that it comes in different colors. And this white color, you can actually tint a little bit, just a little bit. You don't wanna thin it out too much, but you can tint it a little bit with your paint color, which I actually did under this piece, the, the piece we showed you right there. Okay, so that is Dixie Mud. You just need this and your finger finger doesn't really work as well that's part of my do what this is how not to do it um i use a popsicle stick sometimes and then a spatula this you can get these spatulas at the craft store you can get them at a hardware store or you can get them on dixie bell when you go to order your dixie mud these also come i think three in a pack um the spatulas as well these are important okay really important okay so let me show you this is the hardware that came on the stressor very traditional very, very, very traditional, right? Um, this is going in a young girl's home. She's 30 years old, she's having her first baby. Um, and this just isn't the style that she wanted for her little boy's room at all. Um, although this, work, I've done many dressers with this hardware. You can paint it, you can shine it up, you can leave it natural. It, it works really well. It just depends on the vibe that you're going for. So this dresser is gonna have sort of a pop art, rustic, kind of artsy, world meets cowboy world if you can even imagine that that's what we're gonna have going on on the front of the stressor these were very distracting for that so you could paint right it paint right over them and they kind of lose themselves in your design lose themselves in your design but instead she ordered knobs from amazon and these are the knobs that she ordered they're very sleek um she got them on amazon and as you can see the holes do not match up. And she said, really, it was almost impossible to find this size hole at all. A lot of the older hardware, they don't even make, the newer hardware isn't even these same measurements anymore. So you pretty much have to fill your holes and drill new ones, okay? All right, so what I decided to do, this is the drawer right here. I've already filled um, these holes right here. But as you can see, I've only filled the middle hole. Do y'all see that and not the outer hole? And the reason is this handle, um, I'm gonna go ahead and put the hardware over that hole and then just drill one new hole here on the inside. Does that make sense? Same thing on this side. So I'm, I'm gonna use the existing hole and then just, I only needed to fill the inner hole of each of the big drawers, okay? Now that does not stand true with the small drawers. The small drawers, both holes have to be filled, both of them. Um, because it's just too wide, you can't use one or the other. Of course, the handle would be offset to the left or to the right. So both are filled, and then we put the hardware on. Now, this is super nitpicky, right? It still shows up. However, if I put this piece of hardware here over this, from the front, oh, someone's calling. From the front, no one is going to see this. No one's gonna see these holes underneath there they really aren't unless the mom's up above and she's changing the baby on top of the dresser on the changing table and she can see down behind there um, so it's not really that big of a deal but 
I know this young lady, she's like family to me, so maybe if I were gonna be like less particular, but I would, I would, I would have a hard time leaving this, but I'm just letting you know, you don't have to have it perfect, y'all. If you've never done this before, like I can barely even feel that with my fingers, but you could see it, right, when you looked at it. So, um, we're gonna do it again. We're gonna do a do-over, okay? All right, babe, um, have you had any questions or comments or things that people wanted to add to what we're saying while I've been rambling? Uh, yes. Yes, ask away. Let's see. Rescued by Lacey loves your pineapple behind you. My what? The pineapple painting. Oh, thanks. I kind of forgot. I really did forget that that was back there. I did. Thank you. Um, thank you. Thank there you. haven't been any questions yet, but okay. we've got about 130, 25, 30 people tuning in from awesome. everywhere from Alabama to Maryland to Alaska. And thank you, guys. Thank you all for joining in. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so. Uh, Matt, if you would, I mean, I can hold these up, but if you would have them look, this, this is, you can hold that one up. This one's the wrong way. This is what I did. This is me trying to be neat and tidy. This is me filling just the hole and then going back and wiping it off and just leaving wood filler in that hole. And then it dries and it shrinks a little bit and it leaves a little divot there. That's why it shows up. This is how Matt would do it. Matt did not do that. I did it. But right, Matt, that's how you would do it. Am I uh, right? Yeah. And you don't even really have to spread it beyond where the hole was. You just need to go up because once it dries. <clears throat> it shrinks. Yeah. It shrinks a little bit and it'll be concave inside that hole. So you have to put some on the hole, mound it up high, or at least go all around the hole. You want to be able to sand it back down flat with the surface. You've got to have enough there to sand back flat with the surface. So these are incorrect, all right? And that one right there, you can just set that right there, baby. So I also, not only had I done this in blue, I had done this drawer as well. So these, this drawer I thought was ready and we could, you know, it's painted, I thought it was ready. And these looked bad as well. Now this little center piece right here, y'all, this was just like a decorative piece. You wanna hold, well, we'll show them. It was a little decorative piece. This wasn't really where hardware was, well, it was, but it wasn't a pull. For the people that are just now tuning in, can you let them know what you're using to fill these holes? Yes, this is the, I'm using the Dixie Bell Mud. Oh, I didn't tell you what all you can, I did tell you what you could use it for. It's not just to fill your holes. Um, it is, you can also use it to repair gouges, scratches, um, maybe even, you know, like small chips on corners. You can't really build up with it. It's not like you can build like, a big mound of it. It's not, you know, like a Bondo type thing. It's for small areas, small repairs, but it's also really good as a texture additive to your paint. Um, you can do, I've done, I've used mud for raised stencils many, many times. I've used it for raised stencils. So you can use it for your stenciling as well. And it gives a beautiful finish, a beautiful lift to your raised stencil. Um, the only thing I have to say about using it for a raised stencil is if you don't let it cure fully um you and then you come back and you're painting it you've done your raised part you've moved your stencil you've let it dry it feels dry to touch and then you start painting and you want to add a lot of water to your paint like we do with Dixie Bell we paint and then we spray a lot of water on we let it drip and all that you might reactivate your mud so it's to be safe you either need to let it dry for like a good 24 hours before you paint over it with a lot of water or you can seal it with one of the top coats and let that dry and that will hold it in and then you won't reactivate it when you're spritzing with your bottle and painting and doing all your you know artsy fartsy technique and stuff so dixie bell mud you can find it with my link um, and you look under paint in the drop down menu it's not under tools it's under paint so i had to go back over my boo-boo and add more stuff so matt let's do this for them um will you bring me one of these doors that don't have any holes in it? No, they have, don't have holes filled. Thank you. Yeah. All right, so here we go. This is you at home. I am you. You've got your drawers. You've ordered your new, you know, fan-freaking-tastic hardware, and it's a different size, and you're going to give a dresser a completely new look, and you've never done this before. This is what you're going to do. So uh, you're going to get your Dixie Mud, and you can just use your finger if you want, but I'm gonna tell you why you shouldn't. 
I'm gonna tell you why you shouldn't. Um, I actually do like to use my finger when I first start, but you can use a popsicle stick as well, or you can use the spatula. You can spin some out onto a plate and just use nothing but a spatula, but I use it, I use this at the end. So if I use a popsicle stick, my voice is cracking y'all like I'm a 13 year old boy. I don't know what the deal is. Um, so I just press it into the hole. You wanna make sure that you are not just doing it right on the surface, but that you keep pressing, put, put a big mound right over the hole and press down into it. Then take your extra over here, put it right on top of that hole and press straight down into that hole. And you don't have to worry about, you don't have to get on the back side and look to see if you filled it all the way. Sometimes you'll overfill it and when you're done, you'll look inside your drawer and you'll have some of the stuff has fallen through to the other side because maybe you've put too much on there. Um, so that's one way of doing it. Then I go ahead and just add a little bit extra and I just set it there on top for just a minute. So then I'm gonna go over here to this other hole, same thing, press in. The Dixie Mud's super easy to work with. Another thing, I know that they say oftentimes that you need to, uh, once you've opened your Dixie Mud, that you need to store it in your refrigerator because that it, it, uh, it might um, sour, I guess, uh, or go bad. Um, I've not stored mine in my refrigerator ever and it's always been fine, but I'm also, my workshop has an air conditioner in it. So I don't know if that, ha maybe it goes bad if people are using it in their garage with no heat. Um, I'm not sure. Okay, so that's that. Now, if I use my finger, I have a better feel. I use my fingers a lot. I finger paint a lot. I use my fingers to add gilding wax. I use my finger fingers when I gold leaf. Um, so I do like to use my fingers and I like that because I can feel where I'm pushing it into that hole. But the problem with that is I think you tend or I tend to press too far and then if I wipe it off, like I've taken my, my fatty finger pad pushes down in there and it makes it concave before I've even started. And then it's gonna dry and it's gonna be even more concave. But you do still wanna fill that hole and then- Yes, you, you do. So you can, you can take more. your finger and push in like that or if you don't wanna get your fingers messy, like I showed you, just press in with the popsicle stick. But then you need to add some on top of it as well. So what would you say the, the difference is between mud and using spackle or joint compound? Because I can use this for other reasons. Um, because I can use this in my art as well. I can use it as an additive in my paint to give my paint some texture um, And I can also use it for stenciling so I like to use products that work well together and that I can use uh, in, in more than for more than one reason. So that's my that's my purpose What does it say here about it? Um, actually, it says place stencil on your piece and secure so I actually I think when they came out with this, it was mostly for stenciling, oh, but I use it to fill my holes, huh? Nina says that stuff mildews down in Florida. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. So they say it'll mildew or sour. Oh, um, sorry, <laughs> you were already talking about yeah, that. Yeah, I did, yeah, but that's okay, that's all right. Okay, so now you've got it kind of piled up on here. I take my spatula and I don't, I don't put it like down on there and drag it across. I'm not trying to scrape it off. I just want to lay it flat. So I'm going to take my, this is the top of the piece and this is the spatula. I just want to kind of pull it. By the way, hi Nina. <laughs> I didn't say hi. Uh, you want to kind of pull it across like that. So I'm just going to lay it flat and I'm just lightly pulling it across just like that, pulling it right across. And like I said, it's gonna shrink, so you don't wanna press into that hole too much. This is kind of messy, I've kind of gotten it all over. You can have a wet cloth, you know, near you. I don't have a wet one here, but, um, and wipe that off. And that's the problem with me, was that Matt was always kind of messy when he did this. And I would come by and I'd be like, why do you have all this extra stuff? But honestly, it's easier. It's easier just to swipe it on and let it dry. Just swipe it on and let it dry. Don't be trying to clean it up. This stuff sands off really, really easily. So, no problem. So, right. a couple of tips that people have mentioned on here is putting some tape or some foil or something in the back side of that so it doesn't leak through the hole. Oh, in well, if it does. In case you're using something thinner. Okay, oh, in case you're using something thinner. Well, if you use, if you're using the mud, it's not a big deal if it does go through the back. Um, see this right here? You can see where it is. Can y'all see that? Yep. See where it pushed through? Because I, I double demonstrated. I used the stick and then I wanted to show you how to do it with my finger. Super simple. You just reach back in there and you just pull, you just pull it off. It doesn't, 
doesn't make a mess. And if it would have dropped down onto the bottom, same thing, you can just, you just pick it up with your finger. Oh, Amber's on the microwave. She says she's been really sick. Oh, Amber. She's back. <clears throat> when you stencil with it, do you mix it with anything else or just as is? No, I just use it as is and you pull it out into a bowl and you work it. You want to pull it out and kind of work it. It whips. It just kind of whips up. Um, that's what I love about it is the texture. Yeah. A lot of times when you use like spackle or some of those, they're very thick and hardy. You know, they're like a really hardy. This is, um, this is like frosting. It's like working with frosting. Okay, babe, will you take that? Could you use this to give texture to a gumball machine? Yes. Oh, absolutely. Can you hand me one that is done just like that? Uh -huh. Yes, you can. In fact, I think I did use it um, on a gumball machine. Do y'all remember? Who remembers what gumball machine did I use Dixie Mud on? Because I did. Brittany I did. says it sands so easily that I don't worry about a little mess. Yes, it does. She's right. Okay, so these are the surf prep pads. These come in a package. Um, they also have these on the Dixie Bell website as well. Um, they are great because they bend. You can hold them in your hand like this and they curve around to do like spindles and areas that, you know, curved areas, um, which sandpaper, if you've held it, you know, it cracks and it, it'll gouge your piece. This won't gouge. Um, so these are different. This one's a little more coarse. I think this one's medium. This one's very fine and the yellow is super fine. So I'm gonna go with course right now. I did this just a few hours ago, y'all, and it's already drying. Julie says Christmas. Who said that? Julie who? Uh, Dinker's Bishop. Julie, you are right, it was. I used a Dixie Bell Mud on a gumball machine to make snow for a Christmas um, gumball machine. Okay, so I'm gonna use the coarse piece, no, the medium, it's the medium coarse, and I'm just gonna sand around it. And you don't have to take the white all the way off. Y'all see how that, it's literally like mud that's dried and turned to sand. Y'all see that, it's like powder. See how nice that is? That's very, very different than working with another compound. So you don't have to take it all off. You just work in circular motions like this until it gets nice and smooth. And don't, I wouldn't put pressure on yeah. it with your fingers because it'll, you'll sand some areas off faster than others. Yes, she, he's exactly right. You want to just keep it really flat. Now you can still see white there, but if I run my hand across that, it's completely smooth. So now because that was kind of coarse, I'm going to go ahead and get the very fine or the super fine sheet and I'm gonna run that over it now. And that's just gonna take out any of that sanded, sanded feeling that it had. I'm just running this over it lightly, just like that. Tammy and, says you might wanna remind people not to wash it down the drain. Oh yeah, it does say that on the jar, but yes, she's right. Don't wash this down your drain, for sure. This needs to be taken outside and you know rinse. If you're working on a, a large stencil, actually, that's uh, when I've had the biggest mess with it. <laughs> and um, I take it out to the water hose in the, in the yard. And it just sands away so easily, just like this. So I would love to know if anyone has wanted to do this and not done it before, but you wanted to. And I love that some of you are giving tips. Thank you for that. Because I am no pro, but I did learn, you know, from math. <laughs> Acton.Karen, hello Acton.Karen, uh, says refrigerate after opening. Yes. Uh, DBDBRK, hi, first time watching, excited to learn from you and Dixie Bell Paints. I just received my first paint from Amazon. I chose Palmetto. Oh, oh I love Palmetto. Oh my God, I love this color. We'll be watching. Thank you so much. Oh, good. We're glad you're here. I love Palmetto. So this color behind me, you guys, um, on this dresser, the color of the shore right here is a mix that we did last week. It is antebellum blue mixed with coffee bean 50-50 and then a, just like a touch of caviar. Took it to this dark steel color and I love it. Um, so that's it, you guys. That's completely smooth and we will be able to paint right over it. Actually, let's do that now. We've let's had a few ahead. people mention your dress. Where'd you get your dress? Oh, thanks. Well, okay, well, first of all, my dress is just a tie-dyed, like a muumuu. It's like a big flowy muumuu. And it's from Target. And my apron, I didn't want to get stuff on me tonight because I do like my muumuu dress. And my apron is a um, apron that I painted with Dixie Bell paint. 
Where is my water bottle? Okay, so now I'm just gonna wipe this off with a wet cloth, just a damp, not, not a super wet, but just a little damp cloth, and we'll go ahead and paint over this. Sonia recently painted a china hutch. The color is too pink. Do you have any tips for lightening it? I was uh, thinking of using moonshine paint. Well, do you want it to be, I need to, you want it to be lighter? Like, can you tell me what color you used? What color pink? And you want it to be lighter or do you want the tone to just be knocked back a little bit? If you want the tone to be knocked back a little bit, I would suggest using um, black wax or do a voodoo gel stain wash over it in black. I know that sounds terrible, but it actually knocks that boldness of the pink down and it gives you a really, really romantic, rich, romantic pink. Um, moonshine metallics, that would work too, but I mean, you're gonna have a metallic sheen at that point. So this is our custom mix right here. This was 50-50, antebellum blue, uh, a, what did we use? Coffee bean, antebellum blue, 50-50, and then just a touch of caviar, uh, black. And we got this gorgeous blue. So this is, guys, this is the same bowl I had it in last week, and it has been only covered with foil for seven days, and look at it, it's still there. So the beauty about Dixie Belle paint is that it, uh, if you want a thicker paint, you can leave it open to air um, or take it out of its jar and put it in another container and just lightly cover it and it'll thicken up for you and be very, very thick. So you can do like antipasto, uh, antipasto paintings on canvas or you can do like thicker texture painting on your furniture. Um, or you can add water to it and thin it back out and that's what we're gonna do right now. Chicken so, Designs, oh sorry, go yeah, ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, if you sand a piece to its natural wood, can you use the mud? Yes, but what... But you're not talking about to build up, right? Yeah, sand it to its natural color, and then you want to fill the holes with uh, mud. Is that what you mean? Uh, Holly wants to know, uh, does Dixie Bell work well with repairing legs and such? I, I think it does. You mean the mud? Yes. If As long as you're not having to build it up, like if it's something that you need to build up and you need Bondo on, it's not, it's not a replacement for Bondo. But it, I mean, Matt's used it, Matt's probably used it more than me for repairs. So, he likes it. He likes working with it. We've used it in our home, you know, for home repairs and stuff. I'm like, I've got the mud. Uh, okay, did y'all see this? So, here we go. Here's our beautiful, beautiful blue, which I absolutely How much love. Of that? <clears throat> How much of that did you mix up for this dresser? Uh, it was just this bowl. It's about half of this bowl. I didn't, we didn't. I didn't measure, but I do know that I my uh, that I did use 50-50, I do know that. But I don't know how much. But I always say an eight ounce, you can paint a dresser in an eight ounce jar of paint. You really can. JK, um, yes, just to fill the holes in, that's fine. Okay, so we will be doing another coat, but look at this. Look at, you can't see the holes. I can see where my Dixie Mud was. You see? But the, there are no divots. There's no divots there at all. So we'll let that dry, and then we'll go back and paint again over it without water, and just a coat of thin paint, and we are smooth. We, you cannot tell that there was hardware there. Which, like I said, if you're not super picky, it's not a big deal because the, the hardware is literally gonna go in the same linear aspect that the other holes were, and this hardware is gonna completely cover it, yeah. just like this, but, you know. All right, so let's do, let's sand back this, here, baby. Can you take that? Let's sand back this. Now, I will tell you another little tip. Let me give you a, another little tip. If you have used really anything but if you've used your mud just like this and you've got it the way you want it and you've sanded it and you put your paint color on top of it and for some reason it seems to be making the tone of your paint a little bit different once it's dry don't stress just get your boss primer get your boss and do a thin coat of boss across the whole front and get that way it levels the playing field. It levels all the colors out. You can use Boss White or my favorite's Boss Gray. It just will level out the difference between the paint and the, the mud itself. Let that dry and then start your painting process. 
Yes, ma'am. Uh, Jennifer wanted to know, um, how long does it usually take you to finish a dresser from cleaning to finish? <laughs> People ask that all the time. As a matter of fact, I just saw Brandy did a blog on that. Um, and it's a great blog to do because we do get asked that all the time. It's almost impossible, first of all, to answer that question because I don't really know anyone who has timed and doesn't get broken up, called back to life while you're working on it. In addition to right now, uh, I have three different projects going on out here at the same time right now. So I'm always bouncing back and forth between them. But I do tell people I could do a dresser in a day. As long as it didn't have like lots of repairs or slick stick that needs to dry 24 hours overnight or, you know, but a basic dresser, I can wash it, uh, fill the holes, um, prime it, if you paint don't do it, a ton of detail, top you coat it, do it in a day. easy, easy in a day, without a doubt. All right, so now this is the piece, this is the drawer that I'd already painted and then I realized I, I, pressed too hard and my Dixie mud shrunk and I didn't do it the way Matt had always told me to. So I put some more over it Can and oh, sorry, go, go ahead. Now no, I'm just standing no, it off. I have to interrupt her. <laughs> um, Kathy says she just used mud to fill in the shrinkage on her clay molds. Oh yes, that's another, that is another good use for it. Um, so she did some molds and she used the paper clay, I'm assuming, and um, it air dries and they shrink and they crack. So you'll get cracks in them without a doubt almost every single time. So your Dixie mud, you can go back behind that and follow it up with some Dixie mud um, before you paint them. So yeah, thank you, Kathy, for saying that. That's a really, really good, that's a good answer. Okay, guys, look Look at the amazingness, first of all, of the Dixie Ball paint, because let me tell y'all that I filled these holes today, uh, just a few hours ago, and I put a coat of the paint on it two hours ago, maybe. I painted a coat, one coat. I just put new mud on it, re-sanded. I sanded, you watched me, you sat here and watched me. No paint came off while I was sanding. No paint. Now, people, y'all, y'all do the scratch test thing. It drives me crazy. People are like, I painted my dresser and the chalk paint's not sticking. My Dixie Bell paint's not sticking. Look, I did a scratch test and it didn't stick. And I'm like, well, of course not. First of all, it takes 30 days for the paint to cure fully. Um, without a, That's without a top coat. It, it will be hardy and ready to use way before that if you put a top coat on it. But don't be digging fingernails and screwdrivers into your freshly coated pieces. But I will say, why are you laughing? But I will say that I painted this two hours ago and I just ran the surf prep sanding pads over it and I didn't have any paint come off. So that's pretty amazing. JK Designs wants to know, why do I hear music? Is that because she's got another window open and it's playing something? Really? Do There's I? No, music no. no, not, not, I mean on her. Who said that? JK Designs? Phone. JK Designs for you. I, I don't know, honey. I don't. I don't it might be in your computer or your phone. <laughs> we, we don't have any music going here. It's dead silent. Munchkin's Custom Design says that color is gorgeous. Isn't it? It is. And I what do you it. use to seal uh, for the whole piece? Uh, it, it varies. It depends on what I'm going to be, uh, what look I'm going for. If I'm going for a rustic, if I'm going for Hollywood glam or, uh, you know, farmhouse or whimsical. I love high gloss. I love gator hide. I love high gloss. Um, but I also love flat, top coat and flat. I love top coat. Satin is probably what I use. Well, I don't know. Satin or gator hide I use more than anything because I do a lot of dressers and I feel like dressers need to be very, very durable. Um, they get a lot of high traffic. So gator hide is usually my go-to. This piece, yeah, it's in a baby nursery. This piece will probably get gator hide. Gator hide or top coat satin, one or the other, I'm not sure. I'm not sure yet. All right, so there we go. Now we have no divots. I have shown you what not to do, and then I've also shown you what to do. So we have two painted, look there, no divots. No, no divots. No divots. Right? We filled the hole. Really well. Yeah, this color is really pretty. Oh, I don't have that painted very well. 
Make sure you look at your drawers from every angle. <laughs> from every angle. So next steps with this dresser, you guys, is that once I get all the holes filled and all of my drawers painted in antebellum blue, um, I will be putting them back into the dresser and uh, doing my artwork. So it's gonna be a real kind of a funky pop art style. Um, so I'll be putting them all in and drawing with chalk, uh, doing my artwork and um, What design are you gonna put on it? It's a surprise. It's a surprise, I knew that was gonna be the end. <laughs> he knew, yeah, uh, you know I'm not gonna tell you. Wyndham says, uh, Gator, ride, Gator Hyde's a little streaky for her. Any tips to... Gator Hyde is... Gator Hyde, ha, I love it. And, and it is good stuff. Or else, I know that um, several of us brand ambassadors, it's our favorite top coat. It is really good stuff, but it's got some learning curves. Um, if you are brush painting it or sponge painting it, it's got learning curves. I know Brandy uses it a lot, but she uses a sprayer. I think Leah got a sprayer. She's starting to spray it. I don't spray it. I have a sprayer. I don't... We, I just don't enjoy it that much, but... Um, uh, maybe Matt would enjoy it because Brandy doesn't spray hers, her husband does, so maybe Matt would spray my pieces for me. <laughs> she says that's rude. What's rude? I guess that you're not going to share it. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> um, I'm not rude. I, don't, I'm just, uh, I just like surprises. Brittany so, says hang on, I'm still answering the gator hide. Oh. So, for gator hide, there's a couple things you can do. One, seal your piece first with top coat and satin. So do one thin coat of top coat satin. Then do your thin coat of gator hide on top of that. That is your first really big tip. And that's a really good, that's a mm -hmm. winner. The second one is if you're putting gator hide over a dark piece, um, like navy or black or brown, dark brown, um, tint your gator hide with just a little bit of your paint first and then put it on. I do have a blog on my website how, and on YouTube as well a couple videos on YouTube about how I apply my gator hide for a streak free version. Um, I use the applicator pads to do it, uh, the white ones. Um, so you could always look that up as well on my on my website. So well, there was a question, what was the question? Uh, two, two coats of gator hide or just one? I usually do two minimum, usually three, usually three. Yep, 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 yep. Okay, you wanna pass me another drawer bag? And I think that's it, guys. I think we are, I when think we are done. Debut? Huh? When is the office debut? Soon, my my last piece uh, from the, will you move that one all the way over because I'm gonna get dust on it. My last piece from my office just arrived yesterday and we put it up last night, um, but I just haven't taken pictures yet, so. Um, thank you for asking. Thank you. Thank you for asking. All right. Well, I'm going to let you guys go. This was a quick one. Oh, see, we still, no, it wasn't quick. Who am I kidding? Dixie Bell, we still went for almost 40 minutes. I can't make them shorter. I don't know how to make them shorter, but I'm going to keep working. I'll be hopping on over to my page um, at Tracy's Fancy, nothing, doing nothing different, just doing more of the same thing for people that might not have been able to join us here. So uh, I do believe, um, I, she should be coming on. I haven't looked, but Emily uh, with, um, uh, Weathered Heart Designs is coming on um, at n right after us uh, on the hour on the hour eight o'clock central nine o'clock Eastern time um, she'll be on um, doing some one of her precious Emily projects so uh, that's it we thank you so much for being with us tonight um, I would love it if you'd hop over to Tracy's Fancy and give me a like and follow over there same thing on Instagram share this with anyone that you think needs to see it um, needs to see what not to do and sometimes we have to admit their husbands we're right. As painful as that is. Every now and then. <laughs> Love right, you thanks, guys. guys. Bye bye. See you next time.